Hello, my friends. Welcome to another edition of Reflections of a Lifetime. Are you reading from the Leprechaun version of the Bible? And today we'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And uh, we'll be reading 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. All scripture. Not what you pick and choose to suit your doctrine. So are you reading from the Leprechaun version of the Bible? And uh, what I mean by the Leprechaun version of the Bible, this is something that you, you know, you look at the Bible... You know, you can choose any one. You know, it's not a real Bible. You know, this is just, you know, an, an analogy. You take a Bible, and then you, what you do is you go searching for verses at the end of the rainbow, like it's some kind of pot of gold, so you can prove your case and prove your point. Instead of reading in all contexts on the subject, instead of reading what thus saith the Lord says, you go by what other people say, or you just want to think what you want to think. You know, it also says, lean not to your own understanding. So, are you reading from the leprechaun version of the Bible? You might want to ask yourself that. You know, if it ain't thus saith the Lord, then it might just be a leprechaun Bible. You know, you're on that, you know... You think that other people, other Christians have some kind of glasses on. You know, what kind of glasses are you wearing? You know, are they green with uh, four-leaf clovers on while you read your leprechaun Bible? You know, to see something that you want to see that nobody else can see? You know, you take a subject of the Ten Commandments, say they're nailed to the cross, and, uh, and the Ten Commandments is no longer valid. And he want to use a verse here to prove this. And then he got this verse that says it still is valid. So which is it? You should weigh the evidence do you, and study before you uh, come to that conclusion. Because the Bible does not contradict itself. Man will contradict the Bible. The Word of God will never contradict itself. Because God is not the author of confusion. So don't confuse it. Don't, so don't confuse it with what you your opinion is. Just because a majority may believe it, doesn't make it right. Because in memory, remember what it says in Revelation, the whole world wanders after the beast. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people might be reading this leprechaun version of the Bible as, you know, their self. Because itch and ears, you know, people having itch and ears want to hear what they want to hear. You know, so... You know, think about that one for a little while. You know, put on a new spec. You know, put put on some new uh, glasses and uh and pray before you read and let God reveal to you what His Word says. And uh, because when the Son of Man comes through those clouds, there's no no type of sunglasses is going to help you get past his brightness and his glory so use all these glass uh, pair of glasses analogies all you want you know whatever you want to say about it what do you want to say about SDA you know I choose to go by the word of God you know that's an individual step that's everybody's individual step to go by the word of God you want to test if you want to knock somebody you know you want to knock Ellen G. White and then say she's a false prophet whatever it says to test all prophets by the law and the testimony they speak not according to the law and the testimony they're in the false so in technically in your case you're a false teacher you're a false prophet because you're teaching against the law you're teaching against the law of God so that means that you're a false prophet by the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying it. The Word of God is saying it. So, think about that one. This has been another edition of Reflections of a Lifetime. 
and keep studying the Word. As always, I stand by the Word. God bless.